Hello, everyone. Welcome to this special CUBE presentation of the AWS Financial Services Partner Series. The topic today is redefining finance, the role of AI in banking. I'm your host, John Furrier with theCUBE, and today we're excited to be joined by Jared Mendes, who's the worldwide banking industry leader at AWS, and Omar Paul, SVP, Senior Vice President, Product and Engineering at Mambu. Gentlemen, thank you for coming on on this awesome topic. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thank you. I mean, transformation with AI has been significant in every single industry. We heard that at, uh, at AWS's annual reInvent and we're seeing it all over the industry, people looking at their, their businesses and actually looking at this next wave. The impact is going to be significant. Everyone's looking at their architecture, looking at how they do business, where they can optimize this clear efficiencies, but more importantly, transformation. Omar, talk about what you guys do. Let's set the table. How does it fit into the banking space as we start talking about redefining banking? Yeah, for sure, thanks. Uh, so maybe I'll start with what Mambu does just really quickly. So Mambu is a cloud-based uh, banking platform. And we support 260 customers across 65 and so countries. And that includes uh, neobanks, your fintechs, and traditional tier one, tier two, tier three style banks, as well as mortgage lenders, for example. You go get a mortgage loan, it's powered by a lender. And I think we serve 75 million plus end users worldwide. So that's what we do, run the cloud. And we've been doing it for a decade plus. Congratulations, so got a nice tailwind with AI, yeah. certainly here with AI booming. You guys got a tailwind. Uh, we do. We do uh, for a couple of reasons, I think, because uh, since we operate from the cloud, it becomes really easy for us to put something into our stack and then pass it on to our customers really quickly. Uh, something that AWS is familiar with when it talks about agility and time to market when it comes to cloud. So that's exciting. Um, yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. There are many ways I think we can do uh, do things with it. So. Jareth, on AWS side, we had you, we just came out of reInvent. I sat down with uh, Adam Selesky and he said, if you're doing data in the cloud, you're going to have a really good ride with this new edge generator AI wave. Talk about the partnership um, with Bamboo from a pr perspective of the transformation, how they're positioned and what you guys do in that relationship. Yeah, John, and first, thanks for having us and Omar. Yeah, thanks for being on this. Uh, look, I, I think I love the partnership with us at Mambu. Um, it's been a long-standing partnership and really helping transform uh, the banking industry from a core banking point of view, a composable banking point of view. And I think, you know, together what we've been able to do is not just transform what's happening in the core bank, but how do you actually change customer experience and how do you use machine learning around the core bank to really transform how banking is actually delivered around the world, whether that's in Europe, whether that's in the US or Latin America. And I think there's some really cool things that we're doing together. I think more importantly, uh, what we've seen with Mambu is that ability to lean in and leverage the cloud to really drive that transformation, that speed and agility that uh, Omar talked about. And I think it's great that, you know, um, Mambu is actually listed on Marketplace as well. That makes it really easy for customers to now just consume the Mambu services and Mambu platform on running on AWS. You know, one of the things that we saw, we saw at uh, in the industry of the past year is, if people had good data practices, whether it's hygiene or positioned, they were well positioned with this generative AI wave, certainly from a low hanging fruit standpoint, relative to getting it into the applications. Omar, you're at the front end of this, you're in the cloud, you know data and you're in finance. What are some of the challenges you're seeing across the industry with AI? Because you have a lot of data, it's, you know, Banking is all about the application. You got money involved. The AI is, good, is a good thing. Uh, how do you see the challenges? What are the opportunities that come from that? Uh, it's a good segue to talk about challenges and data. I think when it comes to AI, um, as, as Jared will know, is that the quality of the data, the reliability of the data and what semantics you can drive from it and who owns it is vital to what you can do with it, right? And as Mambu is the transaction source of record. So if you if, if a bank somewhere, somebody makes a deposit or somebody gets a loan and an interest rate calculation has to occur, we have that transaction information. So it's, it's good data, it's crisp data and it's owned, so it's useful. The challenges we tend to have with AI are one, the use of data and how you can project it forward. So some of it is personally identifiable information. So you have to watch what insight you can derive from it and who sees it. And then the second aspect when it comes to financial data is residency. And we have customers in 64 countries. And so certain pieces of data by law can't leave certain places, right? AWS is very good in providing resources and underlying infrastructure. For example, the recently announced uh, EU sovereign cloud right um AWS also has some really good hybrid uh, solutions like outposts where we think about how we can run data in country so i think our first challenge is generally around that 
the use of data in a, in a responsible manner that meets laws and regulations. The second challenge I tend to see is the use of AI in making decision making. Like that seems to be one of the, our customers tell us that using AI to make uh, automated credit decisions, um, uh, risk profiling, those can have a good impact because you move quickly and you can match trends across. But you want to make sure it's fair, it's unbiased, they're responsible AI is a thing and it applies in finance. So that's our second challenge is that our customers want to make sure the use of it is fair, unbalanced sure. without bias. So. Yeah, chair. On, on the on the uh, on the large language side, we saw a lot of foundational models. Certainly multimodal, but certainly on the language side, really kind of e easy areas to innovate where there's a lot of data, customer service, document processing, investment recommendations, yeah. analytics. One, one, one. But it's a lot of engineering going on too. So, like you know, the financial one, banking one, area, they're no stranger to data and how to engineer the data at scale, <laughs> uh, protect it. But there's a lot of now new things emerging. What's the customer situation with you guys? How do you see the, the macro challenges on the customer side from an AWS perspective? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's really interesting that you phrase it that way. Yeah, like I, I think when I look at financial services, we've always been in the business of data and information and how to interpret that either for risk or service. So when we think about customers like from BVA to what Goldman and JP and Bloomberg are doing, I think like the use of generative AI and the use of even traditional AI to really drive innovation in that industry is really uh, accelerating. Yeah. Um, you know, I think Adam Slipsky said this earlier in some of the conversations that he had, like we're, we're still early, yeah? we're, we're three steps into a 10K race, like we're, we're early on the journey. But we see so many interesting use cases in terms of everything from, you know, how do you do customer service and how do you do human in the loop to really remove the friction in that customer service point of view? Or how do you improve the efficiency of the knowledge okay. worker, whether that's doing document processing in the mortgage business or in an investment okay. advisor? And really, how do you drive that? You know, I think uh, Verifin and NASDAQ company talked about how they were actually supporting the KYC AML process, so a transaction processing process, where they were able to improve SAR reporting activity by removing the manual effort of collecting, summarizing, and writing the data. Now, I think what's important in that was also how they talked about it that not every problem is a generative AI problem. Some yeah. things are AI problems, some things are automation problems, and some things are generative. And that's yeah. how I think the banking industry is really adopting this and the financial services industry is adopting this in that context of how do we effectively use data and the models in an explainable and regulated way that helps drive a customer outcome. Now, it would be amiss if I don't talk about uh, Code Whisper and what, what we're seeing in terms of code generation as well. I think there's a lot that we're seeing in this space in terms of you know helping uh, reduce the effort from coders to do code generation, but also the self-documenting nature of that you can use to document code as well. Um, and so I think there's some really interesting things when we think about Code Whisper, code, uh, code assistance and developer assistant tools that we're seeing in the market that has actually got to transform speed to market with uh, some of our customers in terms of how they deliver code. Okay, we set the table, market's there. Mumbo's positioned well, Amazon's got good, good cloud for, for AI banking reinvention happening. Now the transformation story has really happened. This, Omar, this is where it gets really interesting. As you guys have been participating in the marketplace on, on the front end of this wave, you're, you're at the front lines and you're making that happen. What do you guys see happening from a platform perspective? How does your platform work, I should say? And how does that support the customers, especially traditional banks and people transforming their legacy systems? Because with AI, you, can, you don't have to kill the old to bring in the new, you can bring them together. We're seeing that a lot where there's actually bridges happening, there's new ways to do things. How do you guys work with customers that are transforming um, right now? Oh, it's, a, it's a good question. I, I was going to um, uh, uh, jump off of what Charit said, and that, I, I think we'll get to it later in the conversation as well, because you said a good structure for how we think about how to use AI in the market. But oh, go ahead. let me start with how yeah. Mambo works. Oh, no, chime in on the comment. Oh. We'll, we'll come back to the, yeah, yeah. the question. So, well, what the stories that Charlotte was laying out, um, when we think about the use of AI and how we classify the use cases and how we can help our customers, it starts with internal productivity, which starts with the code whispers and how you can move the needle faster so you can just get better, you get more efficient with your resourcing, right? And then the second way we think about AI is how our customers interact with us. So knowledge bases, uh, RFP proposals and things like that. Maybe we'll get into that later. And then the third one is the use of AI into our product stack, which then makes it easier for our customers to use. So it's like a dress lecture's cake, if you will, of, of, of how you think about 
ways you cut. So, well, you got touch points with your customer. Anyway, it matches the hype. The hype matches the reality because this is why I love this wave because certainly there's a lot of hype around AI. But what you just mentioned is there's engagement points that you have directly now that you can engage on. I think yes. this is where I think you see a lot of development, reinvention. Again, back to the transformation. The next step is okay, great. What are they doing? Like, how are they how are they engaging with you? How do they solve some of their problems? How do they go to that next level? Because you can move faster now. Right. And I think I riffed off of that and I'll come back maybe to your uh, first question, which is how do we leverage AI and it's, uh, yeah, sorry, AWS and it's, its place in the world of infrastructure and then take it to market because we're cloud-based versus some of the traditional legacy systems that we see. Um, because Mambo's cloud native, one of the biggest advantages we, we, we leverage with AI is its regional coverage, right? Financial institutions that use our service require us to be in a certain place with certain network, with certain latency, with certain capabilities, with audit, with compliance, like all of those things, right? So we get to use a plethora of AWS services, which we don't have to build ourselves. We get to use that and then go to market. So that's really, really effective. When you think about that in contrast to some of your older legacy systems, just as data centers transformed to AWS, you have these old cores that you can't put new tech in because the code's just old. It, it, some of it's mainframe. And so like, how do you, how do you use that? And how do you pull the data across and stitch it over? That's where we think one of our durable advantages is, is being able to leverage the cloud and AWS to move faster. So just to so think about it, I, we have customers who, we have a customer that's ready to go live in uh, New Zealand. And it becomes really easy for us to give them options on where they have data residency RAWs. And I, I get to look at the AWS region map and go, yeah, yeah, how do we think about this? And it's so easy, right? It, it, it's such an accelerant. So that's kind of cool. Charth, how are you guys collaborating with Mambo to get customers to migrate over to the cloud? Um, I, I think a number of ways, yeah, because I think and I think I said it really, really well, yeah. Like I think we're in this way where banking institutions and financial services more broadly are migrating to the cloud, including this very critical core systems like the core banking front. Now I think what we do is a couple of things, yeah. Like when you think about what uh, Omar is saying, like data is at the key of this, yeah. Like when we think about backlog migrations or how to run independent cores, we help customers. And I know we call the book, uh, Omar, with your team in terms of how do you actually do large scale cloud based migrations? And that was a really interesting piece. And I know we might link out to that as well. Um, and that kind of outline kind of common pitfalls, et cetera, that we see organizations have. I, I think the other part that's really great is like that ecosystem and that composable banking so that Mambu provides the core banking platform, but there are other activities like KYC, AML, like uh, yep. personalization, et cetera, that we can connect because all of those partners are built on the cloud. So it really simplifies the way that banks are actually taking this migration, as Omar says, like from going from legacy and monolithic cores to being able to phase and stage the migration in a way that de-risks their organization, but also delivers on that customer experience and that customer promise. Uh, that's really key. And I think, you know, I share this all the time with uh, uh, people that ask this question, like, you know, doesn't this just make it easier for fintechs? Well, no, I think it actually makes it easier for banking in general, because now everyone has access to really improve cloud and core banking capabilities that allows them to move much faster. You know, they're not hamstrung by their Visa and file system anymore. They can make okay. a choice to use Mambu with the composable architecture running on AWS and move fast to meet that customer demand in the same way that a traditional bank can do it, a FinTech can do it. So it's kind of evening the playing field, which is really core cool in the market. It's like, it's like they're not buying a product. It's like the old days of cloud when everyone just used cloud, they built their own SaaS apps. With AI, yeah. uh, you know, Omar was talking about how they use it internally. So it's kind of like, it's not like they're buying AI, they're using AI and then making their product better and for the customer, but also their product. So, yeah. you know, that's the next topic that we see in the industry, and this is what I want to unpack a little bit, Omar, if you don't mind, is that people are using AI to make themselves better using internally and, and using it to engage with the customers, and then the customers are using it. So that flywheel's kicking in. So the, the, the next question is, how are you guys enabling the AI piece to make the products better on the development side? You got, you know, obviously the future of banking is going to be a lot different how people engage with the data, data aggregation, the interface to the expectations of the, of the user experience. So much is going on. How are you guys uh, making the products better, enhancing the products? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, so there, I think when you think about the cloud and offering a product from the cloud to your customer, 
there are two or three really key things that come come to mind. And the first one is being able to innovate, innovate quickly. So today's consumer, today's end user has this digital first experience, right? Your, your photos, you're using a your mobile phone, you, you're doing your thing, you're getting news from TikTok. It's, great. It, it's a great way. So what I want to do is when I want to make my payments, I have the same, I have that same experience. So the faster I can take a, a customer problem embed it in my product and take it to market, the faster my my bank can move. So the first thing that we do is improving our productivity in getting something going. And AI helps us there. If I can write code faster, because AI is helping me generate code, if I can um, deploy faster in a region because I have a con uh, configuration as code and AI has helped write that, right? We run some tech on AWS Lambda and um, it, it's a really cool piece of functionality. And we're letting our customers extend the core. So today, if, if you will, you want to make a mortgage payment. And now you have some extra money. And so you send that mortgage payment, you send some more money and your principal changes, your interest rate calculation changes. But the rules are different in the United Kingdom versus Australia versus, let's say, Canada. Yeah. And so if I can let my customer write the rule calculation really quickly, but I process it, I actually use AWS Lambda to do that. Yeah. This is really interesting because if I went and told the customer, I'm giving you serverless, they don't care. But if I tell them you can now customize the interest rate calculation overnight, they will go, oh, yeah. I can run a campaign like you know, Christmas is coming and I'm waiving interest fees yeah. for a week. That agility happens. So we get to use AWS tech yeah. to in increase, our, to improve our productivity. So that's the first way. The second way it comes out to data. We respond to tons of RFPs. We respond to customers making requests. We respond to all sorts of checks and, and requests into us and reports. I can use generative AI to find patterns in that response so I can answer RFPs quicker. I can help my customer make a quicker decision when they want to migrate. Yeah. And that's huge because time to market is now reduced. Right? Oh, Omar, that's it. Oh, go ahead. And the, go ahead, finish that point. Sorry. And, and then the third bit is the use of AI in data insights to help my customers make decisions. Uh, you have uh, data locality. If I've got a customer which has branches in five countries in the EU, data laws allow me to use that, right? Now, if I went from the EU to the Middle East, I can't do that. But within the EU, buying patterns may be different. Because we are the transaction source of record, I can give customer predictive information that says customers in France tend to think about it this way, whereas your end users in Belgium think about it that way. When it comes to how often they pay, that can be gold. And I can point AI to do that for me, right? Some of it's machine learning, but some of it's generative. Yeah. So, you know, your your what you just said, I was kind of like smiling because this is this comes up all the time on the cube, uh, and and you're highlighting and illustrating, I think, a, a new concept that's kind of emerging. Certainly, fintech's not no stranger to the word latency. I remember back in the day, you know, high frequently trade traders wanted that extra millisecond, nanosecond on packets because they wanted a trading advantage. Now the word latency applies to insights, productivity, workflows. So you're seeing an end-to-end -end impact, a new kind of latency advantage with AI. This is kind of like the secret hidden value proposition, or I should say, not secret, it's what people are doing. That's where the action is. 100%. 100%, yeah, right. it, 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 it definitely is. I don't know, I'm, what do you think? <laughs> well, I think if you're not in the cloud, you can't move quickly. So you have to be in the cloud to begin with. Right? I mean, you just said yeah. you spin up a Lambda yeah. function, boom. You got, so again, this comes up, I, I was talking about this at reInvent as well, the end-to-end -end workflows are now yes. very much in play and it's, it's yep. just a whole nother dimension. There's a latency involved. If you can optimize pieces of it, it's an architectural thing. I think this is where it's exciting. And this is where I think the redefinition will be focused on is that, I don't want to say engineering, but that, that business logic. And Charith, you're seeing that on the cloud at the top of the stack as well, the applications uh, being fed. Oh yeah, hundred percent. I mean, and, and I think John and and, and, I, and and like the way I talk about it is like that friction in the value chain. Yeah, like what AI ML is now doing, letting you do whether that's generative or predictive AI, is letting you remove that friction that we had created over time in that value chain because of the technology issues, because of the processes, etc. Um, so I'll give you some really cool examples. Yeah, like and then there was so many. And John, I know you we, you you got you got the chance to be a reinvent, so you heard some of these live as well. But for those that haven't, like there were some really cool scenarios. Like let's just take the traditional way I am out. Yeah, like Mastercard um, had have shared previously. You know how they've been able to use machine learning to actually increase the catch rate of fraud by three x and then reduce false positives by ten x. Now 
that application of machine learning into that fraud capture process is actually about customer experience and friction reduction. Because now what we're doing is actually yep. stopping fraud where it matters and reducing false positives which add unnecessary friction. And machine learning is actually able to do that. I think another great story is kind of that West. And I and I love Zach's story and his storytelling just in general. But like, you know, he shared previously how NatWest uses machine learning to help uh, customers in low socioeconomic areas. They were able to use the data and machine learning to identify that there were customers that were using fee ATMs uh, when they were transacting. And if they just walked three three minutes away, that they would be able to use a free ATM uh, and not be able to ch pay charges. And they found that they were saving their customers in six month period, half a million pounds, which is crazy. You know, just the application of data and machine learning. But I think I also love the story that he shared at reInvent, you know, being able to that, Omar, to your point, like further personalize that with content and imagery, like and how we shared that he was using machine learning and generative AI to be able to actually change the copy uh, of what you're sending to customers, whether that's shortening it for a text message, extending it for an email, or actually just turning the tonal language of it and making sure that it's on brand. Now, you could probably tell from my accent, I'm Australian. So like, how do you tailor a message to an Australian? You know, you start with, hey, mate. Uh, so you can see, imagine how the beer in, you can get beer in the that. equation. They'll get their attention right beer away. Beer in the equation, nice, <laughs> nice features. That's, that's yeah. what we care about. <laughs> well, this is a great topic. And, and, and I got to say at the, the AI, wave that's coming, we heard, again, we heard that, I actually interviewed the MasterCard um, executives out at reInvent on theCUBE. Um, and the thing about that success is they're already in the game, it just made the game better, right? So again, yeah. the, 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 the point Omar you made earlier about using AI now, because you have existing stuff and then making the products better, is kind of where the action is. But then also now the question is, okay, what's next, right? So Omar, as you look at the horizon, okay, as the engineering and product person, you got to look at the, the 20 mile stair and see the, all the possibilities that, are, that AI can bring to the table. What are you seeing in banking that's on the horizon um, that you're looking at? Obviously things like quantum, blockchain, DeFi, security, regulation is going to get probably more predictable. What are some of the future yep. trends that you're looking at that we should be paying attention to that you think customers should, that will be capitalizing on? You ask me to dream here, John. Yeah. <laughs> There's none of that. I just go one year out. Then. <laughs> it's just like it's a dream, it's a dream big. Um, I think one of the things we um, latency was a really interesting statement, right? As an engineering, as a geek, you think about latency as time between two hops on a network or something like that. But when you think about latency in terms of decision making, um, t today in the United States, when I do my credit report, you know, it it's a slow process, like three agent bureaus get involved, it takes a while, it's, it's irksome. And I wonder why it takes so long. And I'm thinking if I could make that faster, if they could make that faster as a, as a, as a consumer, my current state more accurate, accurately reflects my buying power and my credit risk. And that's going to help a lender with me. So I would really love to see how you can make point in time decisions almost instant like at that point uh, we have a use case with a customer in in asia pacific and, and they're an aws customer as well so they're you know, with a joint customer they can make credit decisions within a day based on how the person has been paying back loans in the last week and they do it on a per person basis across millions of human beings and that that is really interesting so if that was just mainstream if that was just normal Put a yeah. bank and I get that. So I would really love to see yeah. automated point in time, immediate decision making because, you know, if I know my pay is coming and my payday is coming, Best Buy may be able to do a little bit better yeah. versus I'm not going to repay because I can look at one year's worth of history, but I can make that just time. So I want that because I think it'll make the flywheel of commerce move faster. So that's one. The other one is digital currency. Banks look at it suspiciously, governments are not sure. Of course, you have your Bitcoin and your other types of coins around, but digital currency by definition is digital. It's in the cloud it's, it's, and it's tech and you have to be able to move quickly. I would love to see some, some innovation there. The challenge I think that will come from governments. Confidence is key. I love the personalization angle. I think that's a fast decision making, making things personal, yep. both with the data, and obviously, the, and your point earlier about the sovereign cloud, I think it's going to be a really big deal. Uh, and again, that's a strength on, on the AWS side. Um, a lot going on on AWS too. We heard a little future trends there. What's uh, what's the what's the 
What's the thought there in terms of AWS is intersecting the redefining banking future? Yeah. I, I look at it, and, 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 and I think when I think about the future, I, I always think about. Um, I, I kind of take a different lens of it. Like I would say, like I think about what are those mutable things that won't change, and then how does technology transform that? Okay, so customers will always need access to capital. Customers will always want to buy a house. Maybe the future of mobility changes the way we buy cars. Oh, those those immutable needs or those durable problems will always be there, and I, it's it's amazing how then technology and specifically generative AI and AI is really helping transform that. Yeah. So how do I get more personal? So how do I know what charity needs at the point that charity needs and the mode that charity needs? It? We're seeing machine learning, like what NatWest is doing, like what others are doing, really drive that transformation, and we see generative AI transforming that. Now, I think as I shared earlier, like we're still so early in the use of generative AI, whether in financial services or across the board. So I think one of the things that we've indexed on, and you would have seen this, John, uh, in kind of what Adam was talking about, et cetera, was a choice, okay? I think we're way too early to know which foundational model will rule them all. Um, so being able to have that choice that, you know, some things are better to use a translation model and other things are better to use a summarization model, we see that actually evolving in terms of what actually happens. Now, this is everything from compliance officers to loan officers to CFOs to customer experience agents, et cetera. We see all of this actually being transformed because those things that were manual process or comprehension of data or comprehension of unstructured data are actually changing so that people can actually focus on the value added activities which is, you know, like if I was a mortgage officer, it's actually talking to a customer about affordability of their mortgage, not taking a document and typing it in, you know? So like, I see that really transformation. I think the other thing that we see, and you saw this with Amazon Q and the launches and the press releases around that, around Bedrock Agents, and a number of other things about how Amazon Q is being built into our Amazon Connect capabilities, et cetera. Uh, and what I think that's what's going to happen, and this is me a little bit crystal balling here, is I think we're, we're experiencing the change of the human to computer interface okay so you've seen that on the personal side already you know i talked to my alexa how i interact with my iphone i think that same construct is actually now coming into what we see as banking where you know when you think about the document processing and how systems were engineered i think you're going to see that change evolve in terms of how corporate employees actually interact with the computer interface uh, in a different yep. way Instead of searching for a document to find a policy, they're just going to ask a question of a chatbot, and it's going to tell them the policy that's applicable to them, as an example. Charit, great, to, great to have you. I'm on. going to riff off what Charit said, if you don't mind, John, because that was one of one of the things I wanted to talk about: the way the customer interacts, the user experience yeah. today. Like when 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 your mobile phone came out, you went to apps and you did the tappy thing. Right before that, you picked up a phone and then somebody sent you a, a letter in, in, mail, in the mail. But today, as a customer, as a consumer, if I can converse with my account, like literally, I don't need, like the bank holds the account. Okay, so you got Mambo, it's got the transactions, so like the bank holds the account, there's some payment work going on. But the consumer cares about their money and the account. I want to be able to talk to my account. Like, when did I do my last payment? Like, I could change the way my consumer works with me. So the entire app experience can change. And that's an interactive statement. So it becomes conversational. Yeah. And so Charles' point was that, right? I was yeah. thinking about yeah. what could I do with the digital experience to my customer that they can take to their end users. Yeah. And I think I would like to do something with AI there too. Yeah, that's redefining, that's reinventing. And again, that's the yeah. application. I think, yeah. I think we all saw and the non-techies, non-nerds that, that are our friends that are kind of scratching their head when they heard about AI, they saw ChatGPT and they see OpenAI and they go, that's magic. And we're like, R really? It's kind of like, okay. But they, they, it helped educate. And I think why I like this wave is that it's an inflection point because the expectation of the users are changing. Hence the experience has to follow, to your point, Omar, right? Why aren't we interfacing with my bank? Why can't I say, hey bank, what's my when's my payment due? Or how far behind are we? What's my balance? What do I need to do yep. in my spending? I mean you could have a whole interactive agent relationship, personalization. Actually I just want I just want the bank out of the way. I'm talking to my account and my money. I, I literally am talking to my account and my money. That's what I'm doing. The yep. bank is just a provider for it. So that is what I want. And again, it's early, early days. Uh, Omar, yeah. and, and you're at the front line, so I have to find. I have to ask you, what have you learned so far 
in this journey as you look at this future of you know, transforming how data is managed, how compute's going to be working, how applications call platform engineering services, how cloud's going to function in uh, the environment? Yeah, what have you no, it's, it's so a great far? question. Um, I have to take off my engineering and, and product dreamy hat and put on my business hat when I have yeah. to answer the question some days. And it's a matter of return on investment, right? You can do lots of things, but it's the things that are going to change a customer's lives immediately that are things that have the greatest chance of success. So you almost have to think about all the ways and then test which ones work. So there is a bit of a hurry up and wait thing, like a tortoise in the hare. You, you want to run really fast, but you know that maybe five to 10% will actually stick to land and then give you that runway to take the next one. So I think my first challenge is how do I place my bets? Because there's a finite amount of cash, there's a finite amount of resources, and there's a much larger scope of what we can do is which ones do we pick? And so I have to feel it's a bit like climbing a sand dune, two steps, two steps up, one step down, two steps up, one step down. So you stay patient, you keep inventing, and I can move faster internally yeah. than my customers can. So if I'm going to focus on improving my productivity and my team's productivity using Gen AI, I'm going to do that first, right? Because now I have more, more capital in my balance sheet left over to run some experiments with my customers. So. Omar, great to have you on. Great, great insights, a little masterclass. I appreciate your commentary as Senior Vice President of Product and Engineering member. You guys, you're in the front lines. You get the product roadmap. You got to deal with all the engineering. You got to make the customers happy. And of course, Amazon's big partner. Thanks for coming on the, this special edition of theCUBE. Appreciate it. Thanks, John. Oh. Yep, thanks, John. Thanks okay, for having you're us. watching AWS's Financial Services Partner Series, Redefining Finance, the Role of AI in Banking. I'm John Furrier. Thanks for watching.